In recent months, the new media app for Chromebooks has rolled out, and though it looks a lot nicer than what we used to have when you would go to double-click media from your Files app, it really didn't do anything different. But that's all getting ready to change as we're starting to see some new features actually rolling into the media app in the developer channel of Chrome OS right now. So we want to take a look at a few of them. Before we dive in, this video is brought to you by NordVPN. They're the VPN of choice for millions of consumers because they're awesome at what they do, keeping your browsing safe and secure, whether you're at home or on the go. If you'd like to check them out and see what they're all about, head over to chromeunbox.com forward slash NordVPN where you can learn more and get started today. Okay, so let's jump in. And like we always say, when we talk about features showing up in the developer channel, you need to approach this with a bit of caution because there can be crashes and instability and all that kind of stuff in these developer channels. And then when we start talking about adding flags additionally to that, uh, you could run into some problems. So keep that in mind. If none of those things scare you, then you know, give it a try if you want to. But as far as the flags go, if you head to your flags, Chrome colon forward slash forward slash flags, you're gonna see I've enabled media app annotation, which is one of the things we're gonna talk about. And then we've also done uh, media app PDF in ink. So those will make sense here in just a second. But the bulk of all of these new features are just available already out of the box when you're in the developer channel. This is Chrome OS. 89. At this point, there's still no way to open the media app just as a standalone application. I'm, I'm hoping that they just make this a thing where you can open it and, because it has the ability to open files. But to get there, if you go to your file manager, I've downloaded a couple things here. So I'm going to open up this. Once you double click on an item, it will open up this nice new media application. And you can see we've got a photo here and there's some new options available if you're used to looking at this thing that you'll notice right off the bat. But the first thing I want to cover is the fact that as soon as you hit this three dot overlay, you get down to experiments and there's all this stuff down here that you can add. And so one of those things uh, are zoom tools, the new color filter tool. So I'm gonna click that and enable it and you see it pop up up there. Uh, additionally, in experiments, it's hard to read here, but if you look, it says enable auto fix tool. And so what that's telling me is that it's not there yet. You can't select it yet, but in a second, I'm gonna show you why it is we believe that that means you're gonna get an auto fix similar to what you see in Google Photos very soon. One other thing I want to note in this experiment is the fact that we have the ability to save EXIF data um, and display EXIF data. For now, it doesn't seem like that's working the way it should. If you click on, for instance, in a file, in the files application, you hit the space bar, you get all this nice EXIF data over here, location, image info if that actual image has image info. I grabbed this off the website so it didn't have it. But if this was a, a photo that we had taken, you would see the EXIF data from our camera on there telling you f-stop numbers and resolution and all that kind of stuff. Um, you see that in the Files app, but if I click out into the new media app and I click this info button, all you really see is the, the size, the resolution, and the date it was last modified. But clearly there's a space here where this EXIF data will live at some point in the future. So you can expect EXIF data and you can expect an automatic filter similar again to what we see in Google Photos. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of these other features that are basically fully baked and working right now. So color filters is one of the ones that we turned on. If we click into this, you're gonna see these and if you use Google Photos at all, you're gonna notice the names of these look very, very familiar and it's because they're the exact same that you see in Google Photos. It's why we think when it says auto fix, we're gonna get the same type of Google Photos auto fix. But you can click on any of these and they'll filter. Some of this stuff doesn't move incredibly fast right now. Obviously this again is a developer channel. These are things behind experimental flags. So, you know, Take it easy as far as you know judging how fast all this stuff's going to work. There's probably going to be some jank uh, in here as we move around, but it's really cool to be able to see these filters, to be able to do this right here locally on your Chromebook without having to upload the file to Google Photos in order to do something with the with the file itself. And you can see like that filter there looks a little weird. And I've gone through a few filters now, and it's starting. Oh, it came back. So again realize that this is all uh, experimental at this point right now, and so we're gonna run into jankiness from time to time. Additionally, we now have the ability, if we click this little annotate button here, you can actually write and draw right on your photos. And so you can change the pen thickness here. You can go to a highlighter, and we can obviously change the highlighter thickness, and you can kind of see that that gives you uh, less opacity, so you can actually physically highlight stuff without completely covering what's underneath of it. 
Uh, and the pin works obviously as you would expect as well. So if I click there and then we go to pin and we'll go to a thicker pin here and let's go orange. And once we click, you can just draw right on stuff. Again, if you're using a pen or a stylus, this is gonna be a lot better, but you get the idea. You can make some scribbles uh, onto a photo. So if somebody sends you something and you're like, hey, I like this, but let me circle that and draw an arrow here. And hey, that part I circled is out of line or whatever the case may be. Again, you can do all this now locally, right in your files app, you'll be able to just double click the image, annotate, save, and then send it back, which is honestly a pretty cool and very useful new trick that this app will be able to do. Finally, the app still maintains all the other things that you could do with it. So, you know, pinch to zoom with your uh, with your trackpad. You can zoom with these buttons up here. Uh, you can share to other applications from here. You can crop um, with multiple presets or just do a free crop. Um, you can additionally resize the image with a locked aspect ratio or unlock that aspect ratio and skew the image if you need to. So all that stuff's still there and all very beneficial, honestly. And we're getting to the point where when they start continuing to add these features uh, that we're seeing in this app, it's going to be a really full featured application. And there's even hints in these experiments to the fact that we might have some basic video editing stuff too with the reduced motion here. So. Uh, we tried this, this literally is doing nothing at this point in time, but there's no reason there would be reduced motion for photos. Hopefully you'd be able to open up a video and add some video stabilization in here and maybe some other filters will come along as well. And eventually, eventually, this thing could become a full-fledged media editing application for Chromebooks. But guys, that's about it for this right now. Again, this is Chrome OS 89. We're expecting 88 to roll out the end of January. So another six weeks past that. We're talking, you know, early spring, kind of March timeframe, probably before we're gonna see this. And it's not even guaranteed at that point. But what's cool to note is the fact that they're just adding more and more stuff to this media app. And it's not just gonna be a reskinned version of the old thing we had, but it's gonna give users tons more tools built into the Chromebook right from the files application. I think it's gonna be a beneficial upgrade when it all finally does land in the stable channel. But that's it for this one, guys. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, go down there and hit that subscribe button, and be sure to ring the notification bell as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.